Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. The ponies are coming. I swear the ponies are coming. Coming where? Oh no, that, that, boy, the phrasing on that was just highly unfortunate. <laughs> uh, no. Also joining us today is Jacob. Hey everybody. Seems like the Watcher Squadron's off this week since the Pigeon's with us today. Mm-hmm. Hey, at least it, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Oh boy. So, anywho, uh, in today's episode, uh, sorry, in today's review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Generations issue 5 comic, the last of the series. And in this issue, the main six and their new friends try to put an end to the evil schmooze, tearing friendship apart, and the witches, Grekel and Dyer, take their fight to Ponyville. Ooh. Uh, so before we get into the comics, uh, I would like to ask Silver about his opinions on the ish uh, on the series itself, since he didn't review one, two, and uh, one, two, three, and four with us. So what do you think, man? I didn't. Oh. Well, let's see here. Generations is frustrating because you're waiting and waiting on the G1 ponies to show up and start interacting. Well, we'll get to that. Really, this this is more the the tale of the descendants uh, with Grackle and Dyer. The focus is on them, and by extension, the smooth ponies they uh, sent forth. So... I feel like this is a series where it misses its main focus, but then tells an okay story about mm, something different, something other than promised. But it's so distracting because you're waiting for the for the crossover. Where's the crossover? Why have they not crossed over? Bring on the crossover! Come on. Would you say that eh. it's a beat and switch? Not quite a bait and switch. They do eventually make good on it, but it's a very long delayed promise. Mm, all right, all right, all right. So, anywho, um, first impressions about the issue for sorry, uh, first impressions for issue five. What do you think, Silver? Well, see, this is the one where the ponies, the the main six era finally start recognizing the impact of what's happening. And as a result, we get to see them experimenting and trying to figure out what's going wrong. And But of course, you can't have a discovery without Zakura. Yep. Oh, I mean, uh, there, there she is in the background. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Oh, there, there she is in text. I see. A tool is always going to be used as a tool. <laughs> Uh, so thankfully, she's finally involved in, in solving the issue. And we finally understand the difference between the smooths of G1 versus the smooths of G4. But we've waited a long time for the for the opponents to become proactive in combating this negativity. And now, finally, they're heading towards the promised crossover. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, boys. All right, all right. Although this is this is also the twilight of Starlight's role. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. Mm-hmm. But- so basic, basically, after this point, Starlight is going to have a significantly reduced role in the comic. And that's pretty frustrating. I mean, this is supposed to be at her school now. That, that's, tr- that's true. I mean, technically, there's a lot of things frustrating going on, but... <laughs> So, uh, anyway, Jacob, what about you? Yeah, pretty much what Silver said. There's a lot of frustration in this final issue. Uh, it's too too much to just uh, tell it out right now. All right, all right. And as for me, it's rather interesting. You, you get to see the build-up of how they're doing stuff and uh, what they're doing with their stuff. And we see that, uh, okay, uh, they they quote-unquote diluted their Omega rainbow energy thingy to items, so yay. But 
I I guess we'll see that in action soon enough. And yeah, uh, we can't really go deep into it because there's a lot of interesting things. So anyway, if you guys at home have not watched this or read this comic yet, uh, go do a uh, posture and go do so. Welcome back. So we start off the comic with Twilight explaining to the audience at home and also the victims, I mean the ponies that will be throwing their lives away uh, in an experiment that Twilight will be doing on them. Uh, they're like a split and minty, yes. Uh, okay, that's good. So, anywho, uh, Twilight puts a protective dome, not really dome, cage around them and told Rainbow Dash to seep in some party streamers. Technically, they're the thing that's causing the ponies to go aggro. And we see that it takes approximately 40 seconds before the ponies go wild. And they <coughs> they explain uh, the effects and whatnot. And uh, they have a countermeasure on how to cure them. And the items are for Applejack, it's a lasso. Rarity and Mirror, Rainbow Dash is a rocket jackpot. Twilight is her heart pendant. Not really hers. I, I think it could be from the G1 ponies. Um, Pinkie Pie is cupcakes. And the strangest of all is Fluttershy with Angel Bunny in a armor. Does that mean she's going to throw Angel at them? That's perfect. <laughs> uh, I, I guess, yes. But what the fuck is wrong with you, Fluttershy? <laughs> uh, and also Pinkie Pie. Oh, God. I. My question is, what does Pinkie do when she runs out of the cupcakes? I, I, I know. It's... Oh, my God. I haven't I'm... seen them in use anyway. <laughs> <sighs> also, I, sh I should apologize. For some reason, I thought you saw you said we were reviewing issue three. Sorry, no, uh, issue five. Issue five. Well, there we go. Because, well, we are at the promise crossover, but uh, the G five G one ponies really have nothing unique to do, other than attempt to murder each other at Twilight's Entertainment. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry for that confusion, Silva. <clears throat> but anywho, yes. Um, ca ca carrying on. Or do you guys have anything to add to to this, or uh, you already did? Uh, what? well, starting off with using G1 ponies as test child subjects. I don't know if this is, uh, I don't know, on the south side of Vatical and Mink and Licky Displits they don't seem to be showing any signs that they volunteered for this. I do uh, find it funny how uh, Licky Displits going bait on Minty. <laughs> I I'm sure they're... I'm sure they knew the risk before going in and everything I can explain to them I twist your wedges into oblivion! <laughs> I... 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 Mm. Actually, you know, uh, with just a little extra supply of the smooths, you could get a pretty good cage match uh, industry going here. <laughs> Probably. I mean, honestly speaking, put this in any political uh, debate office or something like that, and you'll see rumbles. All right, two ponies enter. One pony leaves. Please, <laughs> oh, but anywho, carrying on. Followed by Mad Max, Furry Road. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. So anywho, we were talking about humans, right? Ah, we got two of them popping in from wherever they were. So it seems that, uh. Crackle and Dyer popped in to the world of Equestria. I'm confused. Why didn't they do that in the first place? 
they thought their magic wouldn't work outside the mountain, but turns out that rule doesn't apply to interdimensional travel. But if that's the case, why didn't they discover that? Because we had to have the comic expand to five issues. Yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Because it was only... They, in the previous issue, they got pissed off because the Smoonies were starting to get a little too friendly with uh, the locals. So they decided to take matters into their own hands. It's... Oh my god. Like... I, I rarely see this. And... Yeah, I rarely see this, but it feels like fan fiction writers have better ideas. Well, if nothing else, we should take this moment to say goodbye to Starlight and Trench. And the mayor. And, well, yeah, and Mayor Mayor. They're no longer a part of this story. Yep, they got their paycheck and uh, they're out here. Yeah, they're, they're just gone. I, I'm amazed. I mean, Mayor Mayor, sure, she never seems to get get to enjoy the task for the long haul. But Starlight, this has been her school under siege, her, her efforts undermined. But now suddenly it's Twilight's show and Twilight's uh, fixing of things. Don't and I just find that disappointing, especially as Starlight didn't get much of a run in the comics. Oh, yeah. Speaking of school, we also don't get any more of student si student six except Ocellus and Yona, even though the rest was still and were still active in the early parts of the plot, fanning all over the new teachers. Yeah. Right. Yep. So say goodbye to the larger community. We've got to focus on the end. I mean, but the at end least does not justify those characters that you mentioned had screen time. Where the fuck is Spike? Yes. He's getting spiked. <laughs> uh, <sighs> by Gabby? Uh, I just mean, we. I, in this case, we getting spiked means being totally ignored and forgotten. I'm, I'm just saying that uh, he and Gabby and uh, who is Dragon Lord? Ember? Yes, Ember. It's been a while. Uh, are out there somewhere playing... Yes. Playing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Playing in quotations. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. That that is that is my uh, hit cannon, and I'm sticking with it. <coughs> Must be bring soon. <laughs> I'm bringing you mean to the term head cannon. Yes. Uh -huh. But anywho, getting back on track. Wow. Uh, we we just we just got to the first panel. <laughs> God damn it. Oh boy. So anywho. <laughs> Uh, so anywho, um, Dyer and Greco pop into Equestria and notice... Sh fuck. They, they, they don't say Sugar Cube Corner, but it's obviously Sugar Cube Corner, but not really. Oh, God. Why? Because there's another pony taking orders? Yes. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe with Pinkie Pie now being a semi rule defender of Equestria, teacher, and uh, party planner, maybe they had to hire someone with a bit more of a stable schedule. I, I guess. Uh, let's, take, let's take that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. So, anywho, uh, Dario Greco goes to Quote Unquote Sugar Cube Corner to kind of drool over, all over the desserts and whatnot. And in the inside, we see. A few ponies going aggro because, well, uh, they want to order something, but taking their good time. And suddenly they notice uh, Dio and Crackle at the window and assaulted them. And well, no, they, sorry? they just freak out. I don't know if it counts as assault unless there's fear of uh, actual harm, physical harm. This is Ponyville. Where's Lila's well, heartstrings on this one? Oh okay, yeah, why are they why are they not chasing down the monsters? <laughs> uh, <laughs> boys. 
<clears throat> they they had practice, you know, like uh, after the of uh, teen time attack, they 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 got prepared, yeah. So, <laughs> anywho, uh, Diane and Greco run away from the mob of ponies that is trying to attack them, and. Greco is a bit pissed because all they wanted to do was eat nice foods and so on. And also be pissed at the small schmoozies, whatever. And talking about the schmoozies, we see Vi uh, keep uh, cleaning up stuff for because she's done with the uh, deco. And Pinkie Pie going up to her asking what she's done. Uh... She did the whole place like what um Vi did the whole place on her own. Uh, the place looks amazing, and Pinkie Pie is amazed and appreciative, and is going all Google over her. And uh, she leaves Vi a present inside the auditorium, whatever it's called. And uh, once Vi opens it. It is a bestie shirt where uh, it's something like, I'm with stupid, and the other person's shirt says, I'm stupid. <laughs> but instead of that, it's just besties with two hearts. Although that shirt looks heartbroken, really badly designed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's the wrong half of the heart, for starters. <laughs> Second of all, it says it's ST, so I'm assuming that's the latter half of best. But that says ends. <laughs> Which means Pinkie Pie has B3. Uh, Pinkie has cut you loose. You are now without her protection. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. <clears throat> she is signaling that you are no longer part of the family, and therefore you've got basically the kiss of death. Yeah. I, I, I mean. And, oh, God. Oh, God. God, this is terrible. I just look on her head just to see Pinky's side of the shirt. And uh, her shirt says, STNs. Well, but that's what it says on Violet Shiver's shirt. Yeah. Well, that was sloppily done then. Yep. I mean, so Pinky's got to have a word with her printer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boys. So, anywho. Uh, Vi feels guilty about about it because technically even though she did the whole thing there was an ulterior motive for it and she feels like she doesn't deserve the shirt and Pinky's friendship and moving on uh, we see uh, the witches are being hunted ah, ah witch hunt ah, funny so hey yeah but you realize that Knowing the ponies, burning them at the stake would probably mean trying to trying to roast them with a side of beef. <laughs> uh, yeah, but they only had brooms, no torch and pitchforks. Because the store that sells pitchforks and torches are closed. So brooms are of no sensitive. It's a clean sweep. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, Silver. They're bristling with antagonism. Uh, uh, I miss you. I'll fix that. Oh, but anywho, um, the witches hide, and the ponies are hunting them down. So we see that the professor. Uh, are being told that oh um, there were some bipedal monsters around and they were causing a muck at the store and the professor which is Bell and Shadow they say that okay uh, we'll deal with it we'll deal with it uh, you guys go check over there we'll check over <laughs> you you go there I go home <laughs> please wanted to use that joke. <clears throat> But anywho, uh, once the coast is clear, Shadow calls upon the uh, witches to come out. And yes, um, we, we get a quick banter of them saying that they were distracting the ponies, blah, 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 looking for them and so on. I mean, uh, it's one of those things. So we get a lowdown of what's happening in town for the witches to... 
uh, check and see. But before we do that, we go back to the auditorium and see that Vi is still <clears throat> uh, contemplating her actions and whatnot. Uh, she feels crummy because of what she did and uh, what she did will hurt Pinky's feeling and the situation's hard and that's why she doesn't want friends. For a being that just lived not knowing what friendship is, is fascinating. So anywho, um, one of the streamers, shaped like a snake, kind of takes Vi over. And now she become a shmoni. Please someone explain this to me. Well, I think she's just been possessed by the by the power that she just infused but into the streamers. That's all I can see. And considering it's already spread across the whole town, it's now stronger than ever, so it's overriding her will. Besides, the thing about streamers is that it, it's just always going for views, and if it can bring on an unwilling host, that hey, that'll work. Damn it, Silver. <laughs> <laughs> you can get way more subscribers that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, especially if you have a cross, uh, if, if, uh, especially if you have a beta key that forces your audience to stick around for two hours, and get a beta key for something that's not that great. So yeah, Overwatch two, anyone? I haven't played it yet. Me in, neither. In the beta. Not touching that one. The only game I'm gonna stick to right now is StarCraft 2. And only because it, I got everything that I wanted to do. Anyway, before we continue on, uh, let's uh, skip uh, back to the previous page when Regrecal and Dara are hiding in the bushes mm -hmm. and Zanghel the Smoonies walk all over them. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think that's a smooth or Smoonies because uh, even though. Okay. Uh, even though the colors are them, it's just the, the tail and the hooves for Bell are not right. Well, it was just, uh, I don't know, maybe it was, it was just done quickly. Oh, man. And again, there's a lot of inconsistency in this comic to begin with. That is true. <laughs> oh, also, uh, Black Bell is pulling the... Um, <clears throat> Tempest Shadow promo pose. Oh, God. oh yes, one. That's one thing about this, uh, <laughs> the art of this comic. I did, forgot to comment on. Uh, was it Michelle Cassiator? Mm -hmm. Uh, did not have a lot of confidence drawing these ponies. I mean, this issue <laughs> is probably the one with the most unique poses, but even then. She lit. She well, very heavily borrows from existing artwork. There are times where it seems like out and out tracing. There are times where it's like she modifies an existing. Yep. And more often than not, it, sorry, go ahead. the art struggles because she does. It doesn't match the emotions being called for. Yeah, and and uh, at first I didn't really notice it that much. I, I do notice a few things here and there for issue one. And then when we started reviewing this, we we got to the point where, god damn, there were so much that it was kind of hard to ignore. Uh, in issue 4, uh, Jacob pointed out that Shadow did the Rainbow Dash smug face. He totally snapped, so you should have listened to him. <laughs> it's like, what? Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then there was the Twilight pose that didn't even have her wings. <laughs> I mean, I remember that one quite infamously. So, um, on that topic, right, Silver? Um, how how was the community? Uh, what 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 did how did it sound like? <laughs> With the community, like like people at large, yeah, like uh, depends you, on sorry. depends on where you go. <clears throat> I mean, there are sections of the internet where they were just announcing this up and down. There was no talent, no effort made. It's just tracing the existing show, and therefore it sucks. Uh, other folks were maybe in more forgiving of a, a duplicated pose, 
But once you notice, it becomes really distracting. And honestly, I, I feel that the thing about tracing, because it's act, that's actually a very real issue in a variety of comics. In X-Men, in Star Wars, there are demonstrations of tracing going on all over the place. Wasn't there and I think that uh, really, uh, I, I forgot what's called, uh, the really bad fan fiction from with the Avatar cast about, uh, I, I forget exactly what it was, but one of the watchers was really displeased with the fact that, uh, uh, what is it called, Angant uh, was the, um, the female from the Water Tribe name again. Kitara? Um, yeah, guitar. That uh, they got together instead of her and Zuko, and then she made the whole comic with uh, redraws. With redraws, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't know of that comic. Uh, I don't know if it's a fan work. I can be a little bit more lenient because you know a fan may not have experience drawing and may rely on that to get a sense of things. Yeah, that's it's true. different with it's different with professionals because again, tracing is a big, big problem in the comic industry. And yet you ask, well, why is this issue there? Are the deadlines, the unspoken pressures so great that artists suddenly have to trace just to get things done faster? Yeah. And, and what and we don't know a lot about what is driving them so I'm not a fan of what I see when the, when I recognize the poses and realize hey they're tracing everything or you know du or duplicating poses a lot but I also want to know why did they do this what was the what were they facing yeah and that's the thing uh, uh, that's why I wanted to know um, what you know because you, you seem to be on the quote unquote cutting edge of news and stuff when it comes to comics. So Oh, I wish that were true, but yeah. I'm in the dark same as most of you. Yeah. All right. And as you mentioned last week, uh, Jay Foskett's <coughs> probably considered one of the worst artists on the on the MLP series, but even he didn't uh, stoop this into this end. Even with the well, what was it, the egg whisk or whatever it was. Well, I don't think it's I don't think it's fair to call Jay Foskett the worst. He has his own style. And that well, it res it may resonate with some, it may upset others, that's for sure. But I recall for one Friends Forever issue, he had this cluster of animals that he duplicated three times over on the same page. It's the exact same poses, exact same uh visibility, and you're like Oh, that's that's trying to fill up a page really fast with minimal effort. <clears throat> what was going on there? Yeah, and no, no, we're not on a first get kick here, but uh, the 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 point is at least uh, when he drew his characters, they were all original, in original mm -hmm. poses. But with this one, it 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 <laughs> at first. I can kind of let it go because uh, the artist is new. This is her first time doing something like this. So, shortcuts, I, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But by the second issue to the fifth, you, you already have to stop use doing that. But no, um, it got them worse. I was going to say that in issue five, I don't see it that much. But there were some poses where uh, Vi sitting in that pose. I feel like I've seen that pose before, but I got no idea where. I I I, I don't know really. Yeah, nothing well, comes to mind <clears throat> on that one. If anything, this issue seems to be the one that features the least amount of duplicated poses, which is good. Yeah. So the, it's like they were saving all the all their main effort for this issue yeah hmm probably but anywho um continuing on um where were we uh, where am i um yes uh vi got 
infected with more schmooze. Evil schmooze. Oh, I, I, forgive me, but I have to clarify it is, it is smooth, not schmooze. Smooth. Schmoozing is when you try to socialize. <laughs> and fail. All right. Maybe. Smooth. Yes, but uh, I'm so confused on this one. But anywho, uh, we see the other destruction that the other professors did. And going through everywhere, uh, we see the girls, uh, we see the witches, point out things that they kind of enjoy, like arcades. Those are a rare breed. And then uh, they see two ponies fighting. And notice how one pony is more powerful than the other. Like, she was timid, now she's aggro. Uh, but we, we we got that explanation from twice, so no point lingering on. And uh, Black Bell just says, Ah, oh, look at them, they're fighting. Isn't this what you want, Master? And then we go to, well, I think this is Sugar uh, Carousel Boutique. But, oh god. I want yeah. to say it's Carousel Boutique. But what they're saying that it's not, but it is. Uh, I'm so confused. Yeah, I'm pretty sure when the last time it, saw, it showed this uh, part where apparently there are snakes inside the house, it was a completely different building. Yep. At least that's how I remember it. Yep, uh, it was quote-unquote one of the store. I, I think it was the tea store. That's why the snakes were having tea parties. Very cultured snakes. So anywho, um, they take a look-see and Grykel just mentions, hey, uh, is this a store that they can group, uh, a group uh, plan a group Halloween costume uh, a year in advance? And Dyer just noticed a uh, flyer about mother-daughter derby tryouts. And somehow, uh, Carousel Boutique is in front of Sugar Cube Corner. Uh, well, well the Ponyville map, the Ponyville map changes with each episode. It seems. I guess. So, anywho, uh, we we see the ponies getting aggro, aggro throwing tables and whatnot, and we see Ocellus running out of the store, and Black Bell says, "No, not my baby," and save the poor uh, changelings. And then uh, Black Bell introduces Ocellus to the witches. <laughs> and uh, Ocellus says, Oh, um, you're pretty. Uh, are you changelings too? And um, they blush. The, the witches are flustered by saying things like pretty and friends. Um, <clears throat> and being complimented by a bug horse. Yes. An alien bug horse. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I think that Ocellus is adorable, but I can't ignore bug horse. Alien bug horse. <laughs> there's got to there's got to be some culture shock going on, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I, 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 in all honesty, I've kind of gotten used to the fact that this is Equestria. Equestria is strange. I just follow the locals. And talking about that, we see that um, Shadow um, Black Bell is telling Shadow to uh, attempt to influence those desperate st stackers. <coughs> Sorry, how how do you say that word, Silver? Those dessert street beasts to the theater. Ah, yes. Mm. That was a mouthful. So long story short, uh, those three assholes tell them to go to the theaters. And Shadow says, consider it done. And by the way, uh, Silver, we, we talk about Shadow in this comic and come to the conclusion that he's useless. Well, he's not useless, but he's the most underutilized of the three uh, Smonies. That is true. I know, honestly, without oh. him, uh, the comic will still have gone on. 
Well, let's see here. Uh, if I remember right from the the final conflict, Shadow was the one looking out the most for Grackle and Dyer, while uh, Sugar Bell and oh uh, uh, no no not Sh- Black Bell, Violet Bell, and you're getting the, the blue one. Big stuff. Black. Yes, Black I am. Bell and Black. Violet something. Violet Shiver. Yeah. Violet Shiver. <laughs> Those two are. Hard at work looking after their students or being possessed by the smooths. Mm-hmm. So Shadow is the only one looking out for the witches in this chaos. But that's too too little too late. Is he? I think so. I mean, we don't know much about Shadow outside of the generic error. Friendship is lame, blar. Oh. I guess we're reformed now. Friendship is nice. Blar. <laughs> Blar, that is true. So, anywho, um, talking about oh the theater. So that place is a theater. I'm so confused. So, anywho, we go to the theater and we see the parties going on. Yay! Uh, music's playing. Uh, we got a DJ. Uh, ponies dancing, eating, having fun, and we see the. Uh, G1 ponies dress up in how Rarity would dress any pony up. So... Any style. Yep. So somehow, they're fighting. What? For some reason. I'm really yeah, confused about that one. Or is it... Yeah, uh, they... Or is it insinuating that the streamers are <clears throat> taking effect, but... That shouldn't be an issue considering that for the streamers to take a pack, they actually have to touch you. Well, maybe it's a sign that they're growing in power, that they're giving off vibes. And wow, they, wow, wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. And they did, um, uh, what's that, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Foreshadow that with the first panel where we do see a few ponies being aggro. Super aggro. Just, just three, mind you. But still, uh, it's foreshadowing. So, anywho, uh, the G1 ponies fight each other, and North Star tells the Wing 6 to kind of get the plan in motion. So. Oh, there's Spike! Ah! Okay. Oh, oh, goody! Five. Fi- <sighs> Five issues in, and he's only there for a single panel. He's like the Where's Waldo. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, anywho, uh, as the witches hit to the theater, uh, they're kind of excited to get in and just kind of be in the party, you know? Just be at a party once in their life. So, Greco kind of decides to uh, come up with a plan and goes to a carousel boutique and tries to find an outfit. And she does. It's the two-person horse costume. And when they come in, we see Shadow and Black Bell kind of cringe. Like, oh God, I don't know this person. Get away from me. And then there's an adult looking scootaloo next to them with glasses and a different uh, mane and coat color and no wings. Uh, but definitely scootaloo esque. It's just the mane. It's just the mane. So, anywho, um, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm suddenly hearing flashbacks to that one scene from Equestria Girl short where Fluttershy came to the costume party dressed as the G1 pony version of herself. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was fun. That was done nice. <sighs> but, anywho, we. Mm-hmm. Get to well, Twilight is announcing parties like yo, all uh, listen up. We we met some crazy ponies, yo, and this is how they look like. Um, we, we went to their place, uh, and they were nice to us, so we decided to bring them here and kind of treat them like best friends and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rainbow Dash, drop the beat, y'all. Uh, I said Rainbow Dash, drop the beat, 
And we see that Rainbow Dash has been tied up in streamers. And we it is revealed that the streamers are alive and is trying to eat everyone. Ah. Yeah. And we get the Eldritch Horror, horror Show moves on full display, except <laughs> it's not the ever shifting title weight of slime. And not it's not as creepy, but still. However, it's confusing because I had assumed that the giant grey clump from which all the tendrils are coming well that that's what while while the chimer transformed uh, transformed into after she got possessed by the streamer smooth. But apparently not uh, after this uh, no, it's just not. Yeah, but one thing I do appreciate is a good soundtrack, and the DJ is dropping the beat, y'all. Probably just playing ballroom blitz. <laughs> so, anywho, we we see that uh, the main six plus G one ponies are saying that okay, uh, we we need to get into action, protect the stuff and whatnot, and beat up the schmooze. And then uh, we see the teachers or the professors uh, hurry every pony out of the auditorium while the witches are confused on what's going on because they hear screaming but they got no idea what's going on. And uh, that's what happens when your horse is patoot. <laughs> oh, horsing around. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, uh, we do see the monster, and I think this is what you're talking about, Jacob. Yeah, with the flame the eyes. Horror. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah, and it never shows up again after this panel. God, I thought that, um, I just, at start, I thought this was Violet Shimmer until I saw the next panel. Yeah, and she's just there. God damn it! What? So fuck. Why would you? <clears throat> it's. Oh my god! How 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 do I? This this frustrates me on multiple angles because they brought something cool to the picture. They they brought something cool to the table, and zero point zero one seconds later, they drop into the trash can just to reveal the real bad guy. What? Yeah, and she also doesn't have the possessed look in her eyes, even though by all means she should be. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, it's inconsistency. There's, there's, there's a problem where they have an idea, they like it, then they throw it away because it doesn't work and they forgot to erase the previous one. And this is Rorschach doing to something that's going to piss me off later. Mm, we can watch the countdown to a Norman expletive fest. Okay, so anywho... <sighs> Feed your rage! <laughs> Well, anywho, uh, <laughs> we see Violet appearing to become Big Boss Violet, trying to fight with uh, Twilight. And they say that, we're ready, we, we got our gear on. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the, the streamers stole everything. Yep. Yeah, and you notice that when uh, Twilight is shooting a rainbow at her, uh, it bounces off of her. Mm-hmm. And also... And she's not wearing the locket anymore. Also, the pose seems so familiar. Is this the yeah. Celestia vs. Nightmare Moon pose for that toy? Not that I'm aware. Okay. So, anywho... Yeah. They, they... Well, uh, before, we do, before we go, uh, this is where I finally realized... Uh, what that thing was in the previous chapter where they tested out the rainbow and a bunch of dummies and one of the smooth streamers came closer and it suddenly started to turn rainbow mm-hmm. yeah basically it was absorbing the rainbow magic to make itself immune to main six power which would explain why none of the enchanted items are working on it at all i that is a good explanation but i highly doubt that well, there had to be some explanation for why they put that thing in the previous in previous issue. I point you to well, the Eldritch Horror. Find out. 
I would like to further test this. Can we throw Angel at the smooth a bit harder? <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> like terminal velocity harder. Yeah, we should, we should. <laughs> but Jacob, I like that idea. Makes sense. But I point you to the Eldritch Horror in the previous page that's with, with ice burning. Yes. <laughs> It's good. It's a good explanation. It's a good uh, theory. I highly agree with it, except for the part where the Eldritch Horror appears and suddenly finds there. So yeah. any consistency, and also, <sighs> also Twilight has her necklace there. Inconsistency. <laughs> mm, okay. I think we found Norman's catchphrase. No, what? actually, it's his. I, I'm just pure rage. I, I'm just angry oh. right now. <laughs> it's... Oh, my God. <sighs> Every, everybody's angry. Yeah. The smooth has infected even the readers. <laughs> uh, boys. Anywho, carrying on. Uh, Vice on par with Twilight that she managed to crack the floor by... Stomping at it, I guess, and eat twilight holes. And uh, we, we see that the professor are having a hard time with the streamers, and uh, the witches are about to get uh, devoured by the earth and also streamers. And Shadow goes up to them and knocks them down before plummeting into the deep depths of wherever they were going. So, uh, one. Last minute attempt to try and make him a sympathetic character. Who? Shadow? Yeah. I doubt that. <laughs> he, Like Silver mentioned, oh. he's loyal to the witches. Yeah. So, And he's also like, forgive the pummeling, masters. You were nearly devoured. I'm, I'm oddly clinical in this time of crises. Yes. Oh, he, we all know he's trying to get favors. Like he's he's kind of trying to be the favorite one. <coughs> Stuck up, masters. I'm a good character, aren't I? Aren't I? Oh boy. So anywho, um, the witches notice that the party is kind of going south real bad, and all of the ponies are infected. And um, who now Vi here is kind of being overpowered and. Threatening the students, uh, the witches are shocked by this by saying, uh, "Flipping and fireball." I don't know if that's a reference to Yona or Ocellus, or they're just curse words for them. <sighs> Anywho, uh, infected Vi picks up the students and Black Bell is showing a lot of emotions on this one. Way more than usual for her. Yep. And I, I like this. This okay. This is one of those arts where it's silly. It's uh it's comical. It's full of emotion. It's full of life. And I love it. If there were more of this in the book, I would have enjoyed it more. It had style. But no. But now you're left with nothing. Oh, God. Also, oh, why drop the students? And you would have thought that Black Bell would have catch, uh, caught them or something like that. Oh, no. Oh, no. They, they, they fall and had to roll a d10 for every feet of height they fall on. So I'm just guessing it's 1d10. All right. And they're very unconscious at this yes. point. Yes. Oh, no. So, oh, we we, we, we we go back to the black eyes. Oh, God. <sighs> Like Jacob says, two pages too late. Yeah, like Jacob said, inconsistent. Oh god. <laughs> so the uh, infected Vi tells the witches, "Isn't this what you wanted? This is what you've been asking for the whole time, right?" And 
I feel like you, Jacob, and Tatera, I'm not 100% sure about you, Silver, are kind of like, ugh, this thing again. Has, it's like, it's been leading up to this, and it's like, crackle has been frustrated about the way that um, her mom is treating her. Uh, I, I'm just going to read, 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 read it verbatim. <clears throat> um, I want some freedom, so I took it away from others. I wanted to make our moms proud. And for what? Uh, what was so bad? Uh, they exile gave them a home, gave them us. They wanted revenge for that. And she last thing she says is, I created you to hurt others. I made you out of my own anger and I, uh, it was wrong. I didn't know what we were destroying. I didn't know what was at risk. And, um, sorry? I think I'm going to call bullshit a bit on this one because I, for starters, going way back a few pages at the beginning at the end say, but... The witches are suddenly horrified by the, the, by what Smooth is doing to the ponies when that was their intent from the start. And I don't know why. <sighs> like Jesus. like she mentioned before, she didn't know what I was at risk. And she wasn't in Ponyville to experience how things were. They were arcades. They were uh, a shop where you can plan a group Halloween party a year in advance. There were dessert stores. There was also bowling alley that you can play bowling at and so on. I mean, this is what they wanted. Like also, uh, Dyer wanted to just hang out with her mom to play roller derby. And it exists in Equestria. So all the things that they wanted exist here. And yeah, I mean, it's one of those things like, oh, just because you want something because it has it and then you you kind of 180 your opinion on it. So like, ah. Uh... Which also brings up the point, well, she, she, here she's going that, uh, well, their moms got got their home, but here's, a, here's the thing. Yeah, they got their home, but they can't use magic outside of it. That's how they get punished <laughs> in the end of the movie, from what I understand. Yeah, and, and besides, what's stopping Greco and Dar from actually leaving? Because, well, they're not. Nothing's stopping him from living, uh, living in, in the first place. In their own dimension, I mean, not in the G4 one. That, they could have gone somewhere else, but they just they, were, they just chose to stay in the volcano. Uh, I mean, the only thing that they can't do is they can't use magic outside the volcano, just like their moms. That's what they've been told, and that, that's the thing. Um, we we got no, we don't really know much about them. This is their first foray. Uh, Silver, w w what do you have to say? Well, I mean, this is what it's all been building up to. Um, and all those abusive letters from their parents. I can understand the, the fear of going into the world without magic. I mean, if it's something that is the norm of your everyday life and then suddenly you have to give it up, we I could see how that would be intimidating. Let us pretend for a moment that in your household you speak your native, your native language, but outside the home, everyone else is speaking, uh, let's say, Italian. Hmm. Do any of us here know what... <laughs> There we go. <laughs> so, to go forth into that unknown can be frightening, intimidating. Uh, so I can understand why they didn't just go. But here they are. They finally sampled the great wide world. And honestly, I could see them giving up magic if it meant that they could go out and live more. Or, heaven forbid, they discover a different kind of magic. Mm-hmm. The magic of French. I need to show you a video, Silver. <laughs> French. <laughs> what was that? Uh, what was that? His magic button. That. <coughs> Wait, you did. You did that, Norman. No, it's all him. No. Uh, no see, 
I can, I can, uh, I can do it with just about anything. Gonorrhea. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, um, sh- should I continue on, or do you guys have anything more to add? Go on. All right, okay. Silva, you good? Let's move uh, forward. So, anywho, move uh, ahead. Uh, Try to detect it. <laughs> All right. So, anywho, um, the infected vice says, You're just a little girl with a few magical tricks. You've got to... Sorry, you got... You're going to need much more than that to take me on. And... <clears throat> who is Yellow Pony again? Posey? Posey. Yes, thank you. Is it Posey? Uh, yes, and believe me, she's a very different pony than the G5 version. Yeah. So, anywho, um, she, 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 she says she got us. And we see that the whole crew uh, is kind of ready, and, uh, rearing and ready to fight. And by the way, uh, while this all is happening, somehow Rainbow Dash got free from her binding. Uh, don't ask how... Well, there's uh, in the in the previous panels where Grackle flares literally flares up and uh, her fire hair just uh, dissolves the smooth everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're assuming her flames hit Rainbow Dash, burn her a bit, and cause third degree burns. Quite possible. Right. And while all that is happening, Twilight Sparkle crawl out of a what crater is that what you call it hole fisher fisher okay so although it's really weird because in in the big panel she's just standing normally but in the (laughs) the smaller one it looks like she just crawled out (laughs) oh she just crawled into it just so she could look dramatic (laughs) climbing out i'm sure it was was at one point very dramatic god damn it so anywho, um, uh, Grekel just says, uh, Stand back, girls. I have this because I am the main protag now. Uh, you want, uh, you hunger for pain and sadness because that's what I made you with. Now I have the power of friendship, so I shall blast you with my cool radiant blast. Ooh, ah. which makes no sense at all and she she does a blast towards the schmoons knees and uh, all of them got hit by rainbow powers and the schmooze is gone I guess ah <clears throat> <sighs> Okay, then we go to the next part. And I I have to say to you guys, reading this part twice made me tear up and cry. Uh-oh, we're getting emotional. Yep. That, that's what happened, and I'm a group. Are you being dire in the background? Who? What? No, no, no. Are you being dire in the background? Uh, no, 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 not to that level. Um, but no, um, what, what I'm saying here is that uh, the way that it's written, the way that it's drawn, the way that the message is coming across, it's really tugging at your heartstrings. Um, lo- long story short, Grekel realized what she did and apologizes to the schmoozies. And tells them that she's wrong and she'll never forgive herself for doing what she did because she's just rotten like their moms. And uh, North Star says, nah, you're nothing like them. You're, you're better because when you notice, uh, when, you, when you know what's wrong, you stopped and corrected yourself. And then we, we see Pinky Pie coming in, handing over Vi the other half of her shirt, which still spells wrong. And they kind of... It, it, it struck a chord in um, Vi. And... Although now, 
Now that I'm looking at it, I wonder if it really says street end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. What's happening to her eyes? Uh, she's trying to cry. It looks like they're being get eaten by something. Yeah. So, anywho... Uh, My lips are sucking them. <laughs> but, but, anywho, um, as Black Bell is disappearing, we see uh, Ocellus coming in, hugging her, saying that you're the best teacher ever. And Black Bell being uncomfortable, but she we all know she loves it. And then... Uh, this. <sighs> the yeah. fuck? Wow. Yeah, I, Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. I, I completely understand the reaction. Like, the next one is the final page of the comic, and it feels like really, really rushed. Like... It feels like there should be at least two more pages for for this. Like, did something miss? Like, one page for a Moon is to show them they achieved independence from the substance from which they, it was core part of them. Basically, they became real mares! Yeah, that's a fuck. <laughs> and here's the thing. Oh, reading it, I was tearing up and whatnot. Like, oh, oh no, Stellis! <laughs> and then I go to the next page, like... <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, wait, 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 what? Uh, uh, I, I, do, I, I don't understand. Like, wait, 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 what? What's going on? Somebody hit the, br- Somebody hit the brake on the train of emotions. And That's what happened. Uh, uh, Silver, please explain to me what the fuck just happened. Well, uh, basically, they got hugged back into solidarity. Nobody hugged. Shadow. Well, Shadow got vibed into the into uh, back into existence. Oh god! Deep mood. There's a deep mood. And this here, oh god! I I told Jacob, I, I and I told you, Silver, that every MLP story has a rush ending where it the ending feels un fulfilled unsatisfying and whatnot and I I, I, I told you guys that huh, it's to be expected because it's a pony tradition as of now and I mean it's a pony tradition you you get used to it this yes but not on this level <laughs> I mean what the f- what the f- what the f- I don't understand. Would two more pages really be too much for this? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Silver, you want to take take over for the end a bit? Okay. I mean, please. Okay. All Dude. right, for the end. After being positive back into existence... The now regular ponies, I suppose, uh, are now are still full time teachers at the school, even though they have learned, only just begun to learn about friendship. Then again, let us consider that the school of friendships curriculum is a bit wonky, very wonky, in fact. Uh, and then there's the question of what to do with these wish- witches, who are courageous. Who came through for their friends even when it was hard. Uh, and the witches decide that they need to explore a bit more before they decide on a new home. They also need to go back and find Trench, who is nowhere to be seen uh, through majority of this comic. He's only in one little circle bit at the beginning. So the, G, the G1 ponies and the descendants of the witches decide that they're going to tour around Equestria a little bit. You know, maybe get a van, go down the go down the way, try to find the true America, I mean Equestria, and become hippies. Hippies. Yeah. Hippies everywhere. Help. Mommy. I can dig it. And that's the end of the comic. No confrontation with the witches of of old. No resolution on uh, Trench and if the witches will have to go back to get rescue him from their mothers. And the punch which is, is missing. Which is ending. Yep. Yeah. 
basically Pinkie Pie finishes with next adventure, don't you think we should fi we should finish the party first? That should have been the punchline. The that's the second phase that should have followed the party. the fanfare. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the the like like a full page spread of the ponies dancing and whatnot. Like, I mean, that will be fun, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, uh, it uh, depends on if depends on if it's all copied poses. Don't care. At least people will uh, people are having fun. <sighs> okay, so are we having fun yet? <laughs> so, anywho, um, Juan begins. Oh god. Oh my god. That that <coughs> hurts. That cuts deep. Yes. Yes, Norman, I don't know if I've heard a comic drive you to such profanity before. It's, it's, it, it, how how do I put this? I I was very forgiving with the comic kind of understanding because oh, it's a new artist, so if the art's not that great, it's kind of their first time doing ponies and whatnot. So it's it's forgivable. You, you know, uh, for, first time artists doing stuff. And we should kind of encourage them to do better and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I can't really forgive is the whole inconsistency of the series. And I'm guessing I'm just giving my final thoughts now. So yeah, it's... It's the inconsistent art style. It's the way that they told a story from point to point to point where they bring something up, then forgot to resolute it or just forgot about it at all. And it all built up to the quote-unquote ending. We, we, we see the schmooze, um, the professors fading away, um... Uh, kind of uh, learning what true friendship is, uh, learning their lessons and so on, and kind of going to fade away to suddenly appear to the next page where... <sighs> I got better. <laughs> <laughs> it, the, fuck that. Oh god, it the next page just says a reflex, huh? I guess that means there's good in you after all. Well, isn't there? True, but what the fuck? After How all that, that doesn't explain why they're not disappearing and Jesus, you didn't get that frustrated with the ending of the Siege of the Crystal Empire, so I'm rocking a better resolution than them. I'm just taking in the sounds of Norman's impotent rage. <laughs> I completely understand his, his anger right now. Rage! <laughs> it's... Rage! It's... Oh my god, it's just... <sighs> yeah, as I said, if if only there was those two more pages, I think this comic would have been passable. Um, I, oh, I think it's gonna take. I think it's gonna take more than just two pages to to mend what is off about this story. Well, no, I, I was talking about Norman's condition right now. Yeah, I mean... Norman's condition, I, I think you need to add a little steam valve on the top of his head. Oh, God. No, but... <laughs> I, I have a feeling people will agree with me on this one because suddenly turning this switch without without even a ha-ha, got-you kind of moment, like, wait, what? You're... Like Silver mentioned, I got better. No, no, I completely understand. It's, uh, it's, uh, Silver, what do you think? Well, it's over. It's done. And in a certain way, there's a relief. Because, well, this was a series that promised one thing and instead delivered something very different. Uh, if you had changed the title of this to, say, My Little Pony Legacy or Descendants, then I would feel it was on target. As it is, it is, well, not. 
it's just uh, My Little Pony. We, we promise the G1 is coming. It's, it's like Game of Thrones. The dragons are coming. I promise the dragons are coming. Meanwhile, the theme song is going, Wiener, Wiener, Wiener. Uh, or, or Winter's Coming. Sure, Winter's Coming. Oh, no, it's the dragons. Everybody cares about the dragons coming. Oh, man, talking about dragons, have you seen the D&D trailer? Oh, Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Let's finish this one first. God damn it. But, uh, well, it ended... I don't feel all that deep a connection to the reformed uh, Smonies as they were pretty, uh, pretty stereotypical. Oh, good and kindness are lame, yo. So, you know, they're there, except they're not. We'll, we'll likely never see them again. Bye. Yeah. Uh-huh. They might as well have disappeared. They didn't, they didn't fade from existence in the story, but they will in, Continuity. Uh, so true. God damn it. And it. And I do mean that they forgot Trench and Starlight Glimmer, which feels like a massive disservice to the and characters. There too. And Spike. And Sakura. And the CMCs. And CMCs. Discord, who was on. Yeah, they were on the cover with Discord of uh, issue three. But oh, the old never... cover by Agnes Garbosca, you mean? Yes, and we're never, ever, ever, ever featured in the show or in this comic. Also, the student yes. six. Yes. Well, they got featured, but you Only know, last I comic. saw. Actually, wait. Were they still unconscious by the um, end? Um, we 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 see only Ocellus. <laughs> yeah, only she's there. <laughs> Let's see, lots of hugging. Yep, Ocellus is there. Yona may still be unconscious in the back. I mean, has anyone checked her for concussion? <laughs> or better yet, has the fisher eaten her? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Yona's, Yona's come close to death plenty of times. At this point, I believe Jeff is having an ear Yona experience. You know... <laughs> On a side note, where's Senbar? Like, where, where's he? There are a couple, right? So, where's he? Shouldn't he? <sighs> He's hanging out in the back, wait, waiting to see who spiked the punch. Oh, wait, it's Spike. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anywho, um, is that also Ah, that's about it for me. This there's a there's a story in here. It's not a good story, but it's also not the promised story. Yeah, like, like I mentioned to Jacob before, like they could have told it in three angles: G four, G one, and the witches. But instead of G one, we get the schmooze pony, and then it's oh god. No, to be honest, I'm just wondering what restrictions that the writers or the creators had. So that that's a bigger question. Ah, <sighs> boys. Um, Jacob, what about you? Well, what are your thoughts on the whole sh- uh, whole series? Uh, well, okay. First of all, uh, Silver. Uh, I just need to ask: Did you maybe watch the G One movie where the smooth appears? Maybe. Oh yes, it was. Honestly, it was featured pretty prominently throughout my childhood. You know, you just tune in and randomly, oh, my little pony, the movie. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah. Okay, just uh, clarify this for me. Uh, what are Rika and Drago? That's the name of the moms of the two witches here. Uh, what was their presence like in the movie? I mean, did Hidia, their grandmother, force them to do harm on Ponyland? Or were they already on board with it from the start? Well, let's see here. It's a little bit of both. Their mom was just as emotionally distant and dismissive as they're being towards their children. So if you want a story about the cycle of abuse, I guess you can point to this. Uh, For some reason, she didn't want them calling her mom or mother or anything. It was always Hidia. 
So, the, but they were also plenty happy and not the least bit uh, conflicted about tormenting others or destroying the pony uh, way of life. Oh. So they're so they're not uh, they're not unwilling participants. All right, I guess that's quite I'm fine with that. Well, now overall, this series it started well off, but in the middle of the third issue, things things started to come apart as more and more not just artistic issues, but also the narrative issues start to pop up. And by the end, as we've just seen with Norman, it fizzles out completely. Oh, I'm with Norman, it ends not with a whimper, but a bang. <laughs> An explosion. Yeah. But yeah, I think the I think the biggest trend this series is suffering from is the false advertising on the first issue when the G1 ca- counterparts of the G4 ponies are all together and we're immediately given the idea that these points are gonna end up together and working off one another, but we don't get that in the end. Yeah, and uh, it, and the worst of all, it takes like four until the fourth fourth issue of the five part series before they actually become plot re- le- uh, relevant. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's I, nice. I'm with Chico in this one because. They showed us the G1 counterparts that inspired the G4 ponies. And, hey, that's a great idea. But it seems, no, we have to use North Star as the leader. Is there any reason, Silver, like why they have to use North Star and so on? Uh, that I forget. Because it feels like it's not random, but it feels like these are the quote-unquote uh, main star, main hero team for the uh, G1 ponies, even though Firefly mm-hmm. is quote unquote the popular one. She, she appeared in the intro and so on. She brought Megan, so yeah, I can. Why? Well, as far as I know, uh, Firefly only appeared in the in the rescue from Midnight Castle. From there on, they swapped the roster. I, I I kind of understand why back then, and that was to sell toys. Uh, that that's how you got the GI Joe problem of, hey, we need to insert new characters here to sell more toys. Okay, bye bye old character. We need to spice up the roster. Yep. But wait, hold on a second. Wasn't Firefly in the Smooth movie? With Megan? I'm sorry, which character? Firefly. Firefly. Mm, nope. Rescue oh. from Midnight Castle, but not not the Smooth movie as far as I know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh. Are you telling what? me, or are you telling us that Megan didn't pop up and use her rainbow necklace thing to stop the Smooth? Oh, she tried, and it tried to decapitate, but murder wasn't working, and that's all it's good at. So it got uh, it got consumed by the smooths. Wait, you mean Megan got consumed by the smooths? No, the the oh, rainbow. Okay. Would have been interesting if Megan had been ca- uh, consumed. That would. Well, I guess in that case, the fourth issue lied to us on that one, because <laughs> when the points are telling the backstory, Fireflies there with Megan. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> and apparently, <coughs> Megan used the rainbow to destroy the first moose because apparently it wasn't strong enough. And it didn't. Now they had the flutter ponies take care of the smooths. They freed the rainbow, which then dumped the witches in the uh, volcano. Oh. But it could not. It could not stack up to the smooths. Oh God! All right. All right. All right. So yeah, all in all, uh, uh, it's uh, pretty mediocre by the end, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> I think I've calmed down a bit for the ending. Um, whew, all right, all right, all right. Um, that was a comic, y'all. 
So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me on t- uh, Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill, or do a search on YouTube for Silver Quill after the fact. Uh, and if you're planning on going being in uh, the Seattle or Bellevue areas of Washington at the end of August, the 26th to the 28th, I'll see you at Everfree Northwest. Ooh, that's fun. It is. It's a good time. Go if you're going to EFNW, guys. Um, be sure to say hi to Silver. Uh, that's a good place to meet up. Also, uh, the pandemic restrictions apply and so on? Uh, we are wearing masks. All right. So, yeah, be safe, guys, when you're going out there. Yes. So, anywho, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Torkar. Under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the Tales of the Ashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Uh, sorry, uh, YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have a Facebook page. Uh, you can also catch us on... Sorry, uh, give me a second to load brain stuff because this comic has been really getting to me. Uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, uh, give me a second because Patreon has changed its layout. So finding the support thingy is a bit confusing. But if I do remember right, there's Lucky Knight, uh, Jacob, myself, Lag, and also Tristan. Yes, Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, wow, I, I am seriously looking for the thing that tells me who's supporting the show. Oh, boys. <clears throat> new layout, guys. New layout. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I'm in Jacob. And we'll, guys, catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. So, yeah. Uh, wow. This comic here really push buttons. Push buttons? Dude, it lit a fuse. You could almost say it was a flurry of emotions. <laughs> uh, yes. God damn it. Did. Uh, I hope I don't get that angry in other issues. Well, you're gonna hear a lot of anger from me on that in the next one.